If you're an agency owner, be very clear on the type of clients you want. I get that sometimes when you're starting off, you sacrifice and you, and you let go, but that's going to burn you in the long run. So just yeah. be very clear on the type of client that you want to work with and you believe you could help and only take on those clients. You can't mm -hmm. delegate the success of your business or the running of your business. There's a difference yeah. between delegating and abdicating. The second we're responsible and I can, and we could hear it in their voice that we're going to be their Hail Mary, their superhero, their saving grace. That's a problem. Yeah. A lot of times, believe it or not, it's not necessarily the lifetime value that is the problem. It's their margins. Their margins are just not high enough. So in terms of the e-commerce side, what do you feel is working well for your e-com clients? So what's working right now? One is if you're going to run ads, have a decent AOV, average order value of, I would say around 80 bucks. If you could have that, you could probably find success on these platforms. If you're going to have less, you better have a great lifetime value just because cost per acquisition yeah. is just going to be higher, which mm -hmm. is fine. I'm all in favor of losing money on acquiring a customer if you're going to make it back tenfold in the long run. So high AOV from a meta side of things, advantage shopping campaigns, advantage plus shopping campaigns are just phenomenal. Those are working really well. And creative, creative is the variable when it comes to e-commerce. I, I think there's, what was like, I was just at a meta conference and they said something like 56% of the auctions actually determined by creative. You could have those things. And of course, we're making the assumption that you actually have a product that people want, right? Yeah. So that, that's number one. What do you find is working well to try and increase that average order value? Bundles, upsells, all those different things. If you have a bunch of different products that people want, you could bundle that together for a higher average order value and a slighter discount so that they could buy mm -hmm. all three items together. Or if you have a basic t-shirt, let's say offer a, a pack, right? Pack of whites, pack of mixed colors, pack of blacks. And then the other thing that works really well is if we've seen a lot of our clients, their free shipping threshold is actually below their average order value. So everyone's just qualifying for free shipping. So one of the ways to do that is actually train them to actually spend more. So incrementally increasing that free shipping threshold to have them put one more thing in their cart or just one more product inside. In terms of the funnel itself, if somebody is doing upsells and one-time offers and things like that, are how are you structuring that? Are you just sending people to like a Shopify store or is some of this done inside of the funnel? Most of it's done through their Shopify store. We're just there to drive qualified people to the site. I think that's the problem that people see Facebook ads or meta ads, whatever you want to call it, as a sales tool that we're responsible yeah. for revenue. We're an advertising platform. That's like saying your billboard or your TV commercial didn't sell anything. No, our job is to get them to come there. Now, if your website doesn't convert or you don't have mm -hmm. these things set up properly, that's on you. We always sit there and say, yeah. we're partners on this journey. If you do your job and take care of the things that are in your control and we do our job and take care of the things that are within our control, this is going to be an amazing partnership. The, one, the second one of us drops the ball in there, we're going to see results fall off. What do you find is a really great start for bringing on agency clients to best set those expectations and get everybody on the same page? That's a great question. I think we're getting better at that within the agency as within our agency as well. We're, we built this like checklist of things clients need to have. And when we veer off of it, that's when we tend to have what's called headache clients or clients that just don't get it. And we're having the same conversation over and over. It's because we, we deviated from our ideal client persona, for example, of who we really want as a client. Number one is if you're an agency owner and, and you're doing that is be very clear on the type of clients you want. I get that sometimes when you're starting off, you sacrifice and you, and you let go, but that's going to burn you in the long run. So just yeah. be very clear on the type of client that you want to work with and you believe you could help and only take on those clients. We'll ask the question, what's your average order value? We'll ask the hard questions. And if they don't know, then that's a red flag for us because now they're looking to like you said, delegate their success. And you can't mm -hmm. delegate the success of your business or the running of your business. You could abdicate that responsibility as a business owner. And there's a difference yeah. between delegating and abdicating. The second we're responsible and I can, and we could hear it in their voice that we're going to be their Hail Mary, their superhero, their saving grace, that's a problem. Yeah. Or their last sure. attempt or anything like that. Those, those type of things, the way they're approaching it. But if we could be the partner on their journey, or even just a guide and get them in the right direction. That's great. So well, that's the question like how much create, how many creatives do you can you produce a week? What's your LTV? And if they don't know their numbers, then we could look at it and be like, okay, this is going to take more educating with this client, which is fine. That's fine. But if they don't know their numbers just because 
they're just looking i don't care about all this i just want to it's not going to turn out well have you seen certain things work better than others to increase the lifetime value yeah because we do we handle retention as well so we do email marketing sms marketing so we take care of the retention side for our clients so that is if they take us on that service that's something we help with lifetime value is a tricky thing because no one really has a lifetime to actually wait for their customers to to come out or for that number to actually realize so you have to figure out like work with them and be like okay what's the ltv within a 60 90 day period and then within a 12 month period what does that look like where's your profitability a lot of times believe it or not it's not necessarily the lifetime value that is the problem it's their margins the margins are just not high enough to run an e-commerce offer where even if they get people to buy three more times so that's why they come to you and say hey we need 5x return to be profitable i'm like wrong platform if you need 5x on acquisition in order to break even, there's a problem. This, this isn't the right platform for you. And there's a, we've done this before where we've actually gone back to some of our clients and been like, can you go to your vendors and negotiate better terms? And they're like, yeah, I could probably get like $3 off. I'm like, look, if you get $3 off, your margin is still up by here. You could afford to pay this much now to acquire a customer. So if we stay at where we're at right now, you're actually more profitable. And we didn't even change anything from a marketing side. We didn't even touch yeah. anything. There's so many things. That's what I mean by there's so many things inside your control. So before you try to fight the platform, which is an auction, right? Let's be very clear. If everyone starts bidding and starts running ads like you see during Black Friday or during Q4 period, the price of advertising is going to go up. There's not much you could do to fight it. It is an auction. The person who could pay the most will win. If you can't afford that, then you're just going to get drowned out and you're just going to get bullied out of the market. Why are you fighting that when you could go back and be like, hey, maybe I could get a couple of dollars off here. Maybe I could lower this. Maybe I could negotiate my shipping terms a little bit more. Maybe I could consolidate things a little bit more. Maybe I could look at my operating costs and do I need 17 graphic designers for an e-commerce business that's doing $30,000 a month in revenue? Yeah. No, I don't. Maybe I could outsource that to some VAs and get that done for... There's so many different ways you could do it within your control. But no, it's always the magic pill, the, the, the silver bullet. It's going to be my Facebook ads. I'm going to get a 10x yeah. return because that's what my buddy down the street gets. And that's what I want from my business.